Hello there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Daily Dose of Drupal. We have a big one today. We're on no episode number 50. Today we're going to be talking about the Module Builder module. But before we get started, if you haven't signed up for the Code Karate newsletter, you should do that now. And you should also follow me on Twitter if you haven't already. I'm Shane. You can follow me at smthomas3. But let's go ahead and get started. The Module Builder module. This is a tool you can use when you're trying to either, you know, maybe you're just getting started building modules or maybe you just want to not have to type out the same comments and the same hook definitions in every module that you create. What this does is it allows you to build out the boilerplate hook definitions in your module file and hook code so you don't have to type all that stuff out every time. So as you can see, it says, you know, it builds out that skeleton or scaffolding for the module. There are two different ways you can use this module. You can download it just as you would a traditional module and use the Drupal UI. In this case, it's a point-and-click interface where it will allow you to create that, that basic module code that will get you started. Of course, the module is not going to do anything on its own, but it's going to give you examples of that code, so you just have to fill in the pieces saves you time and just sa saves you a lot of typing. The other way, and this is the one I'm going to go over today quickly, is the Drush plugin. And This one's a little more confusing because you have to know a little bit more about the command line, a little bit more about what the module can do. So we'll go ahead and we'll go over some of these options. The first, the first thing you're going to do is you need to install it as a Drush plugin, which in this case we just need to go to our command line, go to our home directory and look for the drush, the dot drush folder. I'm just going to download this file here and unpack it. Now you can look if I go in there it has those files for the module builder module. You can of course download this just as you normally would into a Drupal website but in this case we want it to be available through Drush. I'm going to go ahead and go to a working Drupal website just so I can use the Drush commands and I'm going to start going through this list of commands on the documentation page. You can get to that by going here and clicking on read documentation on the module builder project page and this is going to go through some of the features, how to install and configure the UI, and just and how to use some of the Drush commands. So we're going to go ahead and get started. You first have to start by downloading the hook database. This is going to make all of those hooks available for you. You can see it says hook files have been downloaded. The next is to run mb-list and one thing to keep in mind is this module is in the development state so I've noticed there's a few things that don't seem to work quite right all the time but it you gotta keep in mind what this is meant for this is meant for use when you're developing it's just a handy tool to help you build modules more quickly it's not something you're going to use on a live Drupal website that's in production so if you run that command it gives you a list of all of these hooks that it has definitions for. This allows you to get that boilerplate or st structure of that code into a module really easily. So you can, you can also see that there's some presets here. I don't generally use those but you can try those out and see if you have any luck with getting those to work. Next thing we're going to do is go ahead and run this simple command here and you, you're going to notice this is going to ask you some questions. Some of these aren't necessarily going to be relevant all the time, but it goes through all the steps anyways. We don't want to use any presets. We can give it a readable name, a description if we want. Give it help text. If we want some dependencies, the package. You'll notice that a lot of those are information that would go into the info file. Since we didn't tell it to build an info file, it just spits out the code for any of the hooks that we told it to. In this case we did drush module builder which is the MB. We said we want to create my module, my underscore module. 
and we want to use hook menu and hook cron. So you can see it also, of course, takes in the help text that we created. So it implements hook help, implements hook menu, and implements hook cron. It doesn't actually create the info file in this case. If you want to just create the info file, we'll go ahead and we'll run this command, which goes into a little bit more detail. This one is only going to output the info file. Keep in mind, this is not actually creating the module, it's just giving you the code at this point that you can drop into a module. So the first thing on this is going to do a drush mb for build that module builder, my underscore module. We can give it a name so we don't have to answer the, the question for entering the name. So dash dash name and then we're going to call it my module. If you want to enter the dependencies this way, you can do dash dash DEP. This, in this case, we'll use views, and we only want to build the info file. So it's going to ask us for presets. It's going to ask us for hooks. Again, since we're only building the info file, that's not going to do anything. You can add a description. package for the module and you'll see it gives you the proposed mymodule.info. It gives you the name, the description, dependencies, package. You can just drop that in and create the that.info file for your or for your module. The next step is we're actually going to create the entire module because we I mean it's nice just getting the code, but what about if we actually want to have this drush command create the module for us? No reason to have to do that manually. So we'll run through this here. Drush MB for module builder, my underscore module. We want hook cron. I'm going to go ahead and leave this out because I'll define a few here. We want to name it my module. We'll say we'll use views as a dependency in this dash dash write. That's actually going to force the module to be created. We're not going to use any presets. We're going to use cron menu permission mail and any any other hooks you might want to add in there add a quick description help text we'll give it the package and you can see it does in this case I've already created this so I'm just going to overwrite this I was testing it earlier but you can see it actually does still spit out the code for you to, so you can copy and create it yourself but now if we go into the modules, and you look, you can see that my module has been created. We'll go ahead and we'll open these files up. And you can see we have our info file that was created, and we have help, hook menu, hook permission, hook cron, hook form alter, and hook mail along with sample code that you can then strip out and use. You can see it used the my underscore module to create it using, you know, for, for the hooks. So really simple and it just makes things extremely easy. You can also, let's say you forgot a, you, you went ahead and say you forgot a hook that you wanted to add in. After we create it, we can run this command and let's say we want to add to my module we want to add hook init no presets we'll see if this actually works and so we'll take a look I'm not sure if this is actually going to work or not but we'll go ahead and reopen it and just see Okay, in that case, it did, does not look like that one was working. As I said, I, I'm, I don't use it too often. I use it just to get the basic starting point of the module. In some cases, I've just started using it a little more frequently. It's a nice little Drush plugin to have, especially if you are familiar with just the basic commands. And you're just running your module builder with your default hooks that you generally use when creating a module. It just saves you a lot of time makes things easy for you to 
get up and running quickly when building modules. So go ahead and give it a try and see what you think and let me know. Thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal and we'll be back again next time.